November 13th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Ezekiel chapter 40 from the Old Testament. In the 25th year of our exile, at the beginning of the year, on the 10th day of the month, in the 14th year after the city was struck down, on this very day the hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me there. By means of divine visions, he brought me to the land of Israel and placed me on a very high mountain, and on it was a structure like a city to the south. When he brought me there, I saw a man whose appearance was like bronze with a linen cord and a measuring stick in his hand. He was standing in the gateway. The man said to me, Son of man, watch closely, listen carefully, and pay attention to everything I show you. For you have been brought here so that I can show it to you. Tell the house of Israel everything you see. I saw a wall all around the outside of the temple. In the man's hand was a measuring stick ten and a half feet long. He measured the thickness of the wall as ten and a half feet and its height as ten and a half feet. Then he went to the gate facing east. He climbed its steps and measured the threshold of the gate as ten and a half feet deep. The alcoves were ten and a half feet long and ten and a half feet wide. Between the alcoves were eight and three quarters feet. The threshold of the gate by the porch of the gate facing inward was ten and a half feet. Then he measured the porch of the gate facing inward as ten and a half feet. He measured the porch of the gate as fourteen feet and its jams as three and a half feet. The porch of the gate faced inward. There were three alcoves on each side of the east gate. The three had the same measurement and the jams on either side had the same measurement. He measured the width of the entrance of the gateway as 17 and a half feet and the length of the gateway as 22 and three fourths feet. There was a barrier in front of the alcoves, one and three fourths feet on either side. The alcoves were 10 and a half feet on either side. He measured the gateway from the roof of one alcove to the roof of the other, a width of 43 and 3 fourths feet from one entrance to the opposite one. He measured the porch at 105 feet high. The gateway went all around to the jam of the courtyard. From the front of the entrance gate to the porch of the inner gate was 87 and a half feet. There were closed windows toward the alcoves and toward their jams within the gate all around, and likewise for the porches. There were windows all around the inside, and on each jam were decorative palm trees. Then he brought me to the outer court. I saw chambers there and a pavement made for the court all around. Thirty chambers faced the pavement. The pavement was beside the gates, corresponding to the length of the gates. This was the lower pavement. Then he measured the width from before the lower gate to the front of the exterior of the inner court as 175 feet on the east and on the north. He measured the length and width of the gate of the outer court which faces north. Its alcoves, three on each side, and its jams and porches had the same measurement as the first gate, 87 and a half feet long and 43 and three fourths feet wide. Its windows, its porches, and its decorative palm trees had the same measurement as the gate which faced east. Seven steps led up to it, and its porch was in front of them. Opposite the gate on the north and the east was a gate of the inner court. He measured the distance from gate to gate at 175 feet. Then he led me toward the south. I saw a gate on the south. He measured its jams and its porches. They had the same dimensions as the others. There were windows all around it and its porches, like the windows of the others, 87 and a half feet long and 43 and three fourths feet wide. There were seven steps going up to it. Its porches were in front of them. It had decorative palm trees on its jams, one on either side. The inner court had a gate toward the south. He measured it from gate to gate toward the south as 175 feet. Then he brought me to the inner court by the south gate. He measured the south gate. It had the same dimensions as the others. Its alcoves, its jams, and its porches had the same dimensions as the others. 
and there were windows all around it and its porches. Its length was 87 and a half feet and its width 43 and three-fourths feet. There were porches all around, 43 and three-fourths feet long and eight and three-fourths feet wide. Its porches faced the outer court and decorative palm trees were on its jams and its stairway had eight steps. Then he brought me to the inner court on the east side. He measured the gate. It had the same dimensions as the others. Its alcoves, its jams, and its porches had the same dimensions as the others. And there were windows all around it and its porches. Its length was 87 and a half feet and its width 43 and three-fourths feet. Its porches faced the outer court. It had decorative palm trees on its jams and its stairway had eight steps. Then he brought me to the north gate and he measured it. It had the same dimensions as the others, its alcoves, its jams, and its porches. It had windows all around it. Its length was 87 and a half feet and its width 43 and three-fourths feet. Its jams faced the outer court and it had decorative palm trees on its jams on either side and its stairway had eight steps. There was a chamber with its door by the porch of the gate. There they washed the burnt offering. In the porch of the gate were two tables on either side on which to slaughter the burnt offering, the sin offering, and the guilt offering. On the outside of the porch, as one goes up at the entrance of the north gate, were two tables, and on the other side of the porch of the gate were two tables. Four tables were on each side of the gate, eight tables on which the sacrifices were to be slaughtered. The four tables for the burnt offerings were of carved stone, 32 inches long, 32 inches wide, and 21 inches high. They would put the instruments which they used to slaughter the burnt offering and the sacrifice on them. There were hooks three inches long fastened in the house all around and on the tables was the flesh of the offering. On the outside of the inner gate were chambers for the singers of the inner court, one at the side of the north gate facing south and the other at the side of the south gate facing north. He said to me, this chamber which faces south is for the priest who keep charge of the temple and the chamber which faces north is for the priests who keep charge of the altar. These are the descendants of Zadok from the descendants of Levi, who may approach the Lord to minister to him. He measured the court as a square, 175 feet long and 175 feet wide. The altar was in front of the temple. Then he brought me to the porch of the temple and measured the jams of the porch as eight and three-fourths feet on either side, and the width of the gate was twenty-four and a half feet, and the sides were five and one-quarter feet on each side. The length of the porch was thirty-five feet, and the width nineteen and one-quarter feet. Steps led up to it, and there were pillars beside the jams on either side. God, how incredible that we see Ezekiel kind of going back to the start when you showed him the other temple and and we've seen Israel's sin but now it is all about you and a lot of people say that Ezekiel chapter 40 through 48 which we'll get to over the next couple days are some of the hardest to understand passages in the entire Bible they're very reminiscent as people are about to hear uh, of revelation um, but even a little bit more confusing but I think the thing that we need to remember always is your supremacy over everything that you trump everything that we know in the end when the final temple whether it's a physical temple or a temple in quotes that that final temple that you will reign supreme over everything and it's definitely not that you don't now. Obviously, you created everything. But there's this crazy battle that's happening. Uh, most of it's unseen by us. Um, but if we really pay attention, we'll realize it's happening all the time around us. And it's a battle to either distract us from doing your work, God, or just to completely get us entertained with what the world wants. 
it almost has always seemed like the devil didn't read the Bible. <laughs> like he doesn't know who wins in the end. Uh, his arrogance trumps anything that he knows about you. That he honestly thinks that he ultimately can win this world. And boy, there's sure days like it feels like he definitely has won this world. All you have to do is read the headlines on the paper each night and know that to be the way that the world seems to be going. But just like you showed Ezekiel this coming temple and the gloriousness of it, the same thing that we can hold on to and hope in our own life, that sovereignty that you reign supreme in our lives right now, and you ultimately will conquer everything in this world, including the devil and his his minions that try and distract us. God's a lot of that sounds like almost a little bit fantasy to us, e even though we may believe it, um, because it seems so far away and it seems like so not our typical day in and day out work. So help us to be intentional today. Help us to be intentional about all these small nuances that are slamming us in the face and in the emotions and in the heart of, of these worldly things that the devil's really clearly putting into our life. All you have to do is turn on the TV, including some of the so-called religious channels, and realize he is in control of so many things in this world. God, allow us to be intentional to remember that you are in control right now. That if we are obedient to you, then our lives are turned over to you. And we have the best life possible, the life you created for us. Above and beyond anything that we could ever hope for by choosing ourselves or choosing the options that the devil would like us to. I can't imagine this life without any hope, God. And people who honestly think that this life is it. And when you die, you die, and that's the end of it. And so they're living this this lie and this life really big, full of incredible amounts of sin. No wonder the devil thinks he's one. With how we idolize money and comfort and titles and prestige and brands and our jobs and even our children and spouses become idols to us. God intentionally today allow us to remember that you reign sovereign over everything. You reign sovereign over our sin. You reign sovereign over anything the devil can put in our way. You reign sovereign over everything. And I can't thank you enough for the gloriousness and the sovereignty we're about to see over the next couple chapters as to how to build this temple and then what to do with it. We live every day with with the temple inside of us, with, with the Holy Spirit sealed inside of us. Allow our life to match up to what that Holy Spirit, that part of you is telling us to do, God. In your son's name I pray. Amen.